Hey guys, it's Simon here with Caddis Fly Shop and Oregon Fly Fishing Blog and today I'm going to be tying for you a uh, balanced damsel. I personally use it on spring creeks. Um, this is the type of thing you're going to want if you're fishing still water or um, you know where a river would meet an inlet of a lake or um, you know still water or spring creeks. Works great. Um, it's tied on a jig hook, um, 60 degree from Umqua and um, it's pretty much all out of ostrich. So we'll get to it. And here's a look at the fly. You know, it's pretty simple. It uses pretty much one material plus a little bit of dubbing and wire. Um, so it's a pretty quick tie. Pretty simple. And so the hook I like to use for this is the Umqua U660 barbless. Um, and so we'll take one of these and pop it on. And um, it uses these balanced fly pins from Hairline, which look like this. They come in a little container. Um, and there's loads of them in there and then so you would pop a bead on it and in this case I'm using a tungsten bead, a um, metallic olive in 760 fourths. Um, you can also do 330 seconds if you don't need all of the weight for this specific pattern. And so you're going to want to tie it on kind of like this and leave just a little bit of space there. Um, and You do need um, wire cutters or something to be able to pinch that down. So once you measure where you want that bead to end up you need to uh, clip your pin down to size and then you can you can tie it in and so now that I've got my fly pin clipped I can tie in my thread here I'm using this Semperfly Nano Silk um, this is my go-to thread if I am tying something where I don't need a lot of a body built up um, it's really good low profile thread so to get this pin to stick you kinda have to lay down a layer of thread here and uh, once that's down then you kinda pop your pin in and measure where you want it to end up and you do want to leave a little bit of space to dub the head and have that pin forward just a hair so then we'll tie that in and then a trick I've learned from tying loads of these is right when you get back here that has a rough edge so I use a little bit of the dubbing we're going to use on this fly just to protect my thread from popping on that edge so um, I'll go over what dubbing I'm using later but the dubbing you use for this fly or whatever you choose to use I would just lay down just a little bit of it back here so you don't pop your um, thread on that rough edge and so now that your pin is secured like this um, I like to lay my wire in next and so this wire I'm using is uni soft wire the neon olive in small and so I'll tie in a little section of wire here all the way to the back and then next I need to tie in um, a couple pieces of ostrich um, hurl and so I like to use this scud gray this is the color I like and um, for the tail I like to use four pieces um, and I try to get them all kind of even um, same deal as like how a hair stacker would work and so I like to tie them in and give them a little bit of length I like this material because it moves and the damsels when they swim around move a lot and so I found when I used damsel patterns that don't move the fish don't eat and so this material is really good for it it doesn't get too beat up it's a little bit thinner than marabou so when you're stripping or moving the fly around it really tapers down and looks like the the back of a damsel's tail and so um, once we get it kind of where we want it which I think is right about there um, we kind of tie this up here and we'll clip off this excess in this pattern you can conserve quite a bit of feathers and reuse them for stuff um, you know for for the body because our body is just wrapped ostrich as well and so Next what we need is, um, I like to take two pieces of ostrich hurl and um, tie from the tip of the feather in um, and that's how I make the body and so I'll tie like two of them in right here just like that right to the back and then we'll kind of bring that right up to the front. I like to help the feathers poke out just a little bit and then we'll just kind of spin this up. If you have a rotary vise, this is one of the nice features of it. And so right when you get right up to the 
to the uh, bend in the jig hook is where I like to stop. Clip the excess. Then we will rib our um, wire through here to help it stay together and add a little bit of segmentation here. So now that that's good, you can kind of pinch it off uh, in front of where the balance pin comes off. Clip that or helicopter it off. And then next, um, we need to tie the legs in. So for the legs, I like to use three three little pieces of, of ostrich here for each leg and you can tell it, it bends a certain direction and I want it to flare out when I tie them in for the legs. That's what I found works best. And so I like to tie these in right by the right behind the bend of the hook for the uh, jig hook. And then I like to tie it with a little bit of extra length and then you can pull it to the distance you want it. I like to have it just kind of even with the end of the um, shank maybe just a little bit more. You don't need it huge, but it does add a little bit of movement. You can see right here, you know, you want it just, you know, kind of even with or barely just past the end of the shank. And I will do it on the other side so you can see that too. Um, so same thing on the other side, we're gonna take three little strands of ostrich and um, tie these in. In front of the, um, thing and then you can kind of help it into position and you're going to want to um, adjust it where you want it. A couple of wraps help secure it while you're playing around with how long you want them and then we will clip the excess. Now the rest is pretty easy. We just dub the head and add the eyes and then we're done. So for the eyes I like to use these um, mono nymph eyes in extra small. And I tie these in right where the um, right where the pin comes off, right in that little slot right in there. And a couple of wraps, you put these in just like dumbbell eyes if you've ever tied a clouser. You just do a couple of wraps back and forth. And before you get it too tight, you can adjust and try to make both ends kind of even. Just like that. And then for the rest of the fly, we are going to use this um, fly fish Foods bru uh, Bruiser Blend, medium olive. This stuff makes really skinny noodles and I use it for like little blue wings. And It's good for nymphs, it doesn't stay very dry, but for this it doesn't really matter. And so I like to double little head here and then we'll go back and forth and crisscross on the eyes and fill in that extra space until we get to the bead. And we'll be able to whip finish and be done. Um, so this pattern produced for me very well in the um, in the spring on on some spring creeks and um, it was really the only fly I needed plus like a a scud so um, it's one of my new favorites I will be tying it probably for a long time um, until I can find a way to improve it but um, works super good um, and so we'll whip finish here I'll do two whip finishes because I have the space and just so it doesn't fall apart. We'll clip the excess. Um, I don't use head cement to seal up my flies. I use um, the solar as bone dry. And so I like to take just a little dollop um, right where I uh, tie off right here. And then that'll soak in. I'll give it a sec to soak in. <clears throat> and I will hit it with my light and that fly will not come apart now. And so here is the um, fly that I absolutely crushed with this spring, um, the Ostrich Damsel, Balanced Damsel. Um, you can get all the stuff for it at caddisflyshop.com. Tie it, let us know how you like it. Thanks.